All right, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Friday night, quite the busy night out here in terms of space weather activity. Uh, solar flares, a lot of large CME activity, Earth directed, and auroras seem to be all over the place. Uh, latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D globe shows some movement in Japan starting to stir up once again with a 4.6 earthquake. We'll check out the rest of this earthquake activity here. In a minute, uh, being outside of Chico, California here, I managed to catch a uh, quite a few shots out here of the auroras. Uh, and this is very similar to what I've been seeing all night. The pink followed up by uh, green back here behind it. Caught quite a few uh, awesome views out here outside of uh, Chico, California. And uh, this was more on the northern horizon, not, not specifically overhead. But uh, we could see it. It helped out to see, uh, or at least to use a camera, uh, such as an iPhone, to use about a thir uh, three second exposure to get some of these colors to pop off. And uh, it was quite nice. I definitely uh, enjoyed seeing it. It's the first time I've ever seen the auroras in my life. Again, that was here in Northern California. Got quite a few folks sending in uh, some pictures of the auroras in their locations through my email. Um, I will get to those and uh, put together a little montage of them tomorrow uh, for the updates. It's just been a uh, busy, busy day here on this end. Uh, the, the auroras right now still continuing. As you can see here, the view line um, just overhead in the Northern California and Southern Oregon. Quite a few folks asking why they can't see it if they're up in Oregon. Well, you know, it, it all has to do with the uh, potential for light pollution. And if you have, you know, a, a decent view of the northern sky. I noticed that over here, I had to look more towards the, uh, almost towards the uh, northern edge of the Sierra Nevada mountains to see the, uh, the brunt of the activity. But uh, it was... It was awesome nonetheless. So it does look like things are continuing. I was looking at the space weather real-time solar wind stream here, and it looks like it's closed up a little bit as far as the BTBZ component tilting more uh, towards the north. So that could inhibit the aurora activity. Um, but we'll watch this because we've seen throughout uh, the day periods of sharply pointing south tilt in that BTBZ component. The speed, temperature, uh, all still elevated. Proton density here as well. This is going to be probably a, uh, you know, a, a couple days of, uh, in a couple nights of space weather activity here. Looking at the forecast here, there's our G5 class storm originally uh, calling for a G4. Well, we, we blew that out of the water and this is the strongest solar storm since 2003 so we're looking at 21 years here since we've seen this type of activity goodness um, i'm glad i got a chance to get out here and check it out hopefully everyone else did as well so here's a forecast uh, for the next couple nights or so it does look like unsettled conditions are going to be consistent here i don't think we're going to see any stronger activity um, let's go check out the CME activity and see what they have here uh, in terms of any new update. There's a series of CMEs that just hit our planet today. There was probably five or six of them and there's going to be a little break uh, and then that's going to be followed up by it looks like another small series of CMEs uh, but nothing like what we had seen uh, today. There's, there's that brunt. Look at that. Massive CMEs being earth directed quite rare we don't see that all too often so this is kind of a you know i don't know if it's a once in a lifetime event but uh close you know definitely uh it was uh quite the experience here today and on top of all of this activity as far as the cme events go uh, look at that just earth getting hammered here in the green by all that uh dense plasma today we got a pretty good glancing blow or glancing hit from that uh, those series of cmes and on top of all that, uh, today we had the second strongest X flare of this solar cycle from the same sunspot that produced all this CME activity, an X 5.8. Very strong flare. Uh, it does look like that may have been uh, associated with a, a CME as well. We'll have to watch that. Uh, it does look like they mentioned it on that uh, previous image I showed you, but we'll check back on that tomorrow. Uh, either way, X 5.8. 
we check out the top solar flares here so far this solar cycle well there it is proudly displayed up there in second place very close to first uh, that was back in uh, February when we seen that X 6.3 so uh, things are still cooking out there in terms of the flare potential that specific sunspot is now which is three three six six four is a little bit further out here on the southwestern edge of the sun waiting for things to uh, kick up here it does seem like uh, all this activity has stirred up things on the internet in terms of potential slowdowns out here I've noticed that with various websites don't think it's me because I've been consistently um, streaming here all night all day and I haven't had any issues with the stream it just seems like some of these websites on certain uh, domains are having issues so there it is uh, still quite complex still very capable of producing some very strong flares um, but it's getting off here it's definitely getting off towards the southwestern edge of the sun that uh, will be much further this time tomorrow um, should anything blast off from here as far as flare potential obviously we'll get the effects of that uh, but far as CME activity this may be in position now to where it uh, would not be a direct hit still might get a glancing blow from it if we if we do get some further CME activity but we'll have to watch that so you know after all this flaring activity all this elevated m recent solar activity everything else looks like a dud out here <laughs> you know you get that heightened that heightened high right and when the adrenaline's kicking in and then everything else is just kind of a a dull feeling that's kind of what I'm experiencing right now after seeing the auroras for the first time in my life here in Northern California so uh, far as sunspots go there's there's not a whole lot back behind that so right now main threats are coming from this massive region there and the overall threat still remains quite elevated at 95% chance for M flare X flare still at 75% chance and C flare obviously we've been sizzling uh, well above the C flare category for quite some time proton events are still continuing and uh, we could get another round of proton events there from that large X flare that we've seen earlier today as well but uh, it's been quite a day goodness <laughs> quite a day all right so there is our KP index seen that blasting up there into the KP index of 9 G5 class storm I can't say when the next time we'll see this folks hopefully it's not another 20 years or so but you know we're witnessing uh, somewhat of a, a space weather event in history here today quite the aurora activity all over the place so still got to go through all your emails I appreciate it uh, I'll try to get everyone's photos involved in there in the montage and put them up tomorrow all right so what do we got here for earthquake activity have we seen anything major blasting off right a lot of people wondering you know I don't know how much worse it could get with as far as bombardment of the space weather activity so these next 24 hours are going to be quite interesting here to see if things get rocking and rolling because I don't know how much more space weather activity would have to take place in order to get you know that theory about space weather and relationship between earthquakes as well that space weather triggers earthquakes right now well um, I'm not seeing any large earthquake activity at all a uh, little bit of movement here as I mentioned in Taiwan but you know that's that's been stirring up even before all this space weather activity um, looking at the globe here let's pull this up see what we got typical movement out here across the plates some noticeable activity up here across the northern edge of the Pacific plate some fours five pointer off the coast of Japan but you know when you look at these maps 24 7 like I do and you watch these videos you'll know that this is uh, can happen on any given day this is not unusual uh, there's really no swarming going on no major large-scale movement typical activity this is clustering going on here in the crunch zone I call that the crunch zone because if you look at the general plate movement out here this is a Pacific plate in the yellow the arrows indicative here of the plate motion and of course the longer the arrows uh, the more distance that it travels there on any given year right for example five centimeters a year certain plates obviously like the North American plate a little bit less but the crunch zone over here where the Philippines are and the Indonesia Islands region look at all these arrows all pointing in that general direction 
I call that the crunch zone because that is where a lot of plate dynamics happen. There are a lot of built up stress that can happen in a very short amount of time, all because of the subduction zone process out here and all the plates kind of meeting in one spot, so to speak. So that's why it's always active out here. Um, New Zealand area, seeing a handful of threes up and down the plate boundary. Uh, doesn't look like any of this space weather activity has stirred up Hawaii. It looks quite quiet out here for now. Uh, Southern California, a handful of smaller quakes out here, but this is not anything of abnormal activity at all. No major swarms, no unusual large activity. Um, in fact, the 2.5 map and above pretty much removes all of those microquakes, and that's basically what they are, microquakes. Uh, nothing going on up in the super volcano of Yellowstone. And just for fun, we'll, we'll double check that and see. Oh, that one's not working, so I forgot. That site may be down here for a little while, it looks like. I'm uh, not for sure why they're down. I, I don't know if they know it or not. I'm sure they do. But also the uh, Utah spot here. Hold on a second. Okay, Missy Mimi's advised me there was a 4.3 right now just off the coast of northern. Well, when was this one? Yeah, that was super early this morning, 4.3. Um, that was prior to any activity out here. That was well off the coast of the BC uh, or VC uh, <laughs> Vancouver Island range here. Let's get this right. Uh, out in the uh, one of these fracture zones. Uh, but aside from that, there's really not a whole lot happening out here across the Pacific Northwest. Um, let me check out the trimmer map here tonight. 161 epicenters of trimmer along the Cascadia subduction zone. We've been seeing that, you know, on any given day here. Nothing elevated uh, following all this space weather activity. Uh, the rest of the country, pretty quiet, including New Jersey. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet as well. Let's check out Iceland, see if anything's stirred up out there in Iceland. You know, I say this right now because um, we've gone back on several videos here and compared large space weather events and we've looked at the days following these large events and most of the time if something's going to happen here in terms of large scale movement earthquake activity it's going to happen within about 48 to 72 hours that seems to be the time frame when larger earthquake activity tends to ramp up following a large space weather event so right now even though there's not a whole lot of elevated activity we could wake up tomorrow seeing a seven or eight pointer out here or even larger somewhere. Uh, but right now, the effects of the space weather activity are not showing up here um, on the plate tectonic side. Uh, but we'll definitely keep an eye on it. I figure if it doesn't, you know, if it doesn't happen here in a couple days, then, you know, that's a, that's a big hit to that theory, you know, whether these are related or not. And one could say, well, it takes a couple months for it to kick in. But how does that, what does that mean? <laughs> you know, a couple months. It's like, here in a few hours, the sun's going to come up. Well, yeah, it's obvious. We could see any type of earthquake activity in 30 days. So, you know, when we went back and looked at the comparison, large events did take place following the arrival of large CME activity in the past. We looked at that numerous times. And it seems as though, you know, like I mentioned, it's a couple days. 30 days is a crazy amount of time to, to claim something. You know, that's a wild, that's just like saying, um, you know, in the next million years, the Earth is going to get hit by an asteroid or something. You know, eventually it's going to happen. Eventually there's going to be earthquakes. So we can't use that 30 days. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. So a couple days here, we'll see what happens. Either way, earthquake activity right now, somewhat um, moderate in certain areas, but nothing of elevated movement that I've no noted today. All right, uh, look at that beautiful prominence here off the southwestern uh, area of the sun. We'll continue to watch that sunspot area. I still think it's capable of producing some more large X flare activity. Uh, that is quite the dynamic sunspot. Look at that. And all these other ones are nothing <laughs> comparison to this monster of a sunspot. That's going to go down in the history books for sure as a pretty significant event. I haven't heard anything about any power outages 
anything going on. I have experienced a little bit of slowdown across various websites that could have something to do with the ongoing uh, G4, G5 class storm. And as of right now, still looks quite elevated. There is the uh, current aurora. And, uh, you know, hopefully you guys got out there to see it. Uh, this is expected to continue throughout the evening. They may come in waves as far as the intensity of the auroras, but they are there. So get outside if you can, clear skies, and pick up uh, on the auroras. I found uh, here, at least on the southern edge here of the view line where I was at, I could see them with my, with my uh, you know, without any help from a camera or anything, just with my eyes. Um, but it does help out to use like a probably a three second exposure uh, to brighten out those colors and make it quite visible as noted here this again this is in the in the uh just outside the chico area very visible and um there's missy mimi's up there looking at this i believe this was a meteor i maybe caught at the same time a little three second exposure and uh, it was definitely nice i enjoyed it you could see the cutoff line as well with the moon and um yeah definitely won't forget this event all right folks i'm out of here have yourself a good night seismograph stations are quiet thanks for uh, subscribing if you haven't subscribed already please subscribe we do uh, daily updates on space weather activity and events and of course uh, we try to get out there and uh, cover these as much as we can when they happen and uh, we appreciate everyone's support out there. We'll catch you guys back out here in the morning. Enjoy your Friday night and uh, enjoy the Aurora show if you're continuing to watch it. Take care, folks.